Step one, let's go to the expenses detail worksheet. So if you look at the bottom of the screen, you will see that this workbook has three tabs and each one of these tabs is a worksheet. So click on expense detail and then let's cut the contents of the range B1 through B3. So go to column B, left click, drag down, then you can right click and select cut. Now once you selected you also could have used the cut button up on the ribbon. Either one works fine. And let's paste them into the range A1 through A3. So now let's select A1 through A3. You can right click and then paste. Step two, let's add an outside border to the range A5 through D5. So select A5 through D5 and our borders button is up on the ribbon right in the font group but click the down arrow and what we want is outside borders. So go down and select outside borders and now A through D5 has an outside border. Step three, let's change the width of column C to 16. To change the width of a column, just select the column, right click, select column width on the right click menu and change that to 16, click OK, and there is your column width. Step four, select cell B6 and edit the cell content to be 125.24. Now when we clicked in the cell you can type within the cell or you can type up here which is also known as the formula bar. Either one is fine. Step five, let's enter the value shown in table one into the corresponding cells in the cell range B20 through B25. So starting in B20, where it is blank, you will add this, the values. And this is what it should look like once you type in the values into each of the cells. In step six, select cell A26. So let's go down to A26 and enter the word total. We want to add cell borders again, this time to the range A26 through B26. So let's select A26, B26, and we want to use the all borders format. So let's click the down arrow and select all borders. So now you'll see the borders are top, bottom, on the sides, and even in the middle there is a border. In step 7, in cell B26, let's use the sum function to create the totals from the range B6 through B25. So to do that we can go all the way up to the ribbon, make sure you're on the home tab, click the down arrow and let's let's select sum. Now when you select the sum function in this case it is guessing correctly that we want to sum everything from B6 to B25 and notice the notation. You'll see equals sum in parentheses B6 colon and the colon means through. 
So B6 through B25. So when you press the enter key, you will now get the total. Step eight in cell D6. So let's go up to D6 and click on that. We want to type TCM. And in D7, we want to type KTT. And then we can use what is called flash fill to automatically enter the codes in the range D8 through D25. So once you've typed in the values into D6 and D7, go ahead and select the entire range through D25, and then go up to the Fill button on the Home ribbon and select Flash Fill. In step nine, we need to zoom out to 90%. So let's go to the bottom right, and it is currently set to 100%. And you can use your slider to make that 90%, or you can click on the 100%, and you can select Custom, type in 90, and click OK. And there you have it. Step 10 on the Expenses by Salesperson worksheet. So now we have to move to another worksheet. So let's go ahead to the bottom. Make sure we click on the correct worksheet, Expenses by Salesperson. And let's change the orientation to landscape. So for this sheet, we're going to get, go to page layout, orientation, and we're going to change this to landscape. Step 11 in cell A2. So let's move to A2. Edit the cell content to read sales team expenses by salesperson. So you can do it right in the cell, or you can simply go to the formula bar and add by salesperson. Press the Enter key, and there we have it. Step 12 in the Expenses by Salesperson worksheet, let's change the height of row 3 to 15. So let's go ahead to row 3, right click. On the menu, you will see row height. And we'll simply type in 15, click OK, and you will see the row height has changed ever so slightly. Step 13 in cell A5, edit the cell content to read salesperson. So let's go to cell A5. Now once again, you can double click in the cell and you can type right into the cell or you could have done it up in the formula bar. Step 14, let's change the width of column D to 19. So column D, right click, column width. We want to change that to 19. In step 15, enter the value shown in table 2 into the corresponding cells in the range A6 through A10. So we want to add some values into these cells. And this is what it should look like when you are done. Just double check your work. Make sure you have not made any typographical errors. Step 16 in cell D6. 
let's enter a formula to determine the non-travel expenses where the non-travel expenses equals the total expenses minus the travel expenses. So what we want to do is start off with a formula so we always begin with an equal sign. So once you click into the cell, just go ahead and type in equal sign. And we are going to subtract travel expenses from the total expenses. So we want to first click on cell B6. Then hit the minus key, which is just the dash key next to the zero on your keyboard. Then go ahead and select in the next cell, which is travel expenses. And there is the formula. The value in D6 is going to be whatever is in cell B6 minus whatever is in cell C6. When you press the Enter key, you will see the net non-travel expenses is now $166.92. Step 17 now, we want to just copy the formula from D6 all the way down through D10. We are going to use what is called the fill handle. And that is this little dot in the lower right. And if we hover over that until it turns into a single line plus sign, left click on that, and then drag your mouse down. And you'll see the border and then let go of the left mouse key. And now that formula has been copied. In each one of these cells now, you'll see B7 minus C7. If I move down a row, B8 minus C8. It is following what is called relative positioning. When we copied the formula, it did not copy B6 minus C6 because that would have given us the same value all the way down. It followed relative positioning. It knew when we copied it that the formula would be two cells over to the left minus one cell over to the left and then the value. So that is how relative positioning works and that is how Excel works by default. In step 18, we want to go to cell A12, and we want to delete the content in there. So let's highlight the cell, press the delete key, and the information is gone. Step 19, let's apply the wrap text formatting to cell A13. Click in cell A13, and let's go to the home tab and on the in the alignment section select wrap text and now you will see that the text wraps according to the size of the cell step 20 we need to zoom into 110 percent on the expense by salesperson uh, sheet so if you remember how to do that we can go to the lower right and we can click on the 100% and we can say 110% click OK and now you will see that the sheet is a little bit bigger 110% step 21 let's move the expense details worksheet to the left of the expenses by salesperson worksheet. So to do this, all you have to do is click on the expense detail, hold down the left key, the left mouse key, simply drag that to the point and just let go of the mouse button. There we go. In step 22, we need to insert a new worksheet into the workbook. 
and then rename it expenses by category and then move the new worksheet to the end of the workbook. So first let's insert a new worksheet. That's what this plus sign is in the bottom. And you'll see here it just called it sheet one. It didn't know what to call it. To rename that worksheet now all you have to do is double click on the name and then you can type in whatever new name you would like. Here it's expenses by category. And then lastly, if you remember, we need to move this tab to the end. So let's just left click it and you'll see it turns into a little sheet of paper and you'll just move it to the end and let go of the left mouse button and there we have it.